Hello, and welcome to How We Define Documentary, Common Characteristics. I often begin the lecture with contextual quotes. We have two contextual quotes here, one about documentary and one about art. I'll give you a few moments to read them. There is a time in film before the term documentary was coined. And in this time period, nonfiction films were made, but they were often more scientific and indexical in nature. Film historian Tim Gunning refers to early examples as the cinema of attractions. In the 1930s, John Grierson proposed a documentary is a creative treatment of actuality, not fictional or factual, a creative treatment of historical reality. What a documentary isn't, a reproduction of reality, a presentation of unbiased, or undisputed truths, or a collection of facts. Documentaries are about reality. Documentaries are about real people. Documentaries tell stories about what really happened. Documentaries tell stories from the real world. Let's consider Whose story is told, the filmmaker or the subjects? When you're watching a documentary, the story is always presented from the filmmaker's perspective. Documentaries are about real people who do not play or perform roles. Instead, they play or present themselves. Consider the impact the camera has on the social actor. How do people behave differently in the natural world and then in front of the camera? Documentarians may ask participants to reenact situations. All of this has a really large impact on how social actors present themselves in a documentary. Because most contemporary documentaries follow a narrative structure, Let's look at how a narrative structure in a documentary allows for a point of view, a problem solutions construct, a cause and effect construct, and a time and space construct. Four key elements comprise a documentary. Indexical documentation, poetic experimentation, narrative storytelling, and rhetorical oratory. Indexical documentation. We have a quote from our textbook author here. I'll let you read that on your own, but I want you to pay attention to the image on the right-hand side of the slide. That's an image from the Lumiere Brothers film from 1895. And as we learned in Introduction to Film, these were the first films to be shown publicly. This predates documentary and falls into the realm of indexical documentation. They presented an actuality that happened without any type of perspective or point of view. Poetic experimentation. Avant-garde art and film in the 1920s influence and enable a point of view in nonfiction filmmaking. Realism is replaced with the filmmaker's voice and vision. And on the right, you'll see an image from the documentary, A Man with a Movie Camera. We'll watch that later in the semester. Narrative storytelling. Beginning in 1906 and continuing with the emergence of editing, filmmakers like D.W. Griffith, 
and styles of editing like Soviet montage, there's a picture of Sergei Eisenstein on the right, allow narrative storytelling to begin to replace spectacle in film. Rhetorical address. Rhetoric in communication is the art of persuasion. Rhetorical address in documentary, I have a textbook author quote here, sought to address an audience persuaded of the merits of a perspective to predispose us to action or become immersed in sensibilities and values of the speaker. To conclude what we've been talking about here in relation to common characteristics of documentary, documentary film is the intersection of indexical documentation, poetic experimentation, narrative storytelling, and rhetorical oratory. These elements combine to give documentary a perspective and a voice, and they speak to the spectator about an event in our shared world. Mockumentary, what is it? A mockumentary is a fictional text which appropriates the aesthetics of a documentary genre and other reality-based media. Mockumentary is built upon our shared understanding and expectations of nonfiction narratives in television, film, and radio. One of the earliest examples came from a radio broadcast. Orson Welles' War of the Worlds, a radio broadcast in 1938. You can see the headline there. Radio play terrifies the nation. People listened to the radio broadcast and didn't realize it was a fictional event, and they thought Martians were landing on Earth. One of the first examples of a mockumentary on television is the BBC hoax, the Great Spaghetti Harvest, which aired on April Fool's Day. There is a video version of this in the playlist for week one on D2L, so be sure to watch it. The Rockumentary, or Mockumentary, This is Spinal Tap, released in 1984, directed by Rob Reiner, was certainly one of the most influential mockumentaries of its day and continues to be. Most of the dialogue was improvised. In the last image, the man on the right was Christopher Guest, the co-writer and star of This is Spinal Tap, and Christopher Guest went on to direct the mockumentaries Waiting for Guffman, Best in Show, A Mighty Wind, and For Your Consideration. Mockumentary on television. Examples include The Office, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Trailer Park Boys, Reno 911, and Arrested Development. Mockumentaries like the film Borat and television show Curb Your Enthusiasm blur the lines by having fictional characters and actual people interact in non-scripted sequences. Mockumentaries are often used to give social commentary. The 1992 Belgian mockumentary Man Bites Dog presents a dark and violent look and questions the codes of objectivity and ethics in reporting in documentary filmmaking. A warning to potential viewers, this film contains graphic and violent content. The mockumentary assigned for the critical writing assignment this week is the mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows. Be sure to watch the feature length version and not the television show. You'll find the critical writing assignments in detail in the syllabus. I've copied and pasted the information here. The expectations are that you're writing a minimum of two pages, that's roughly 500 words, in MLA format and supporting your claim critically with evidence from your research. It's not necessary to give a full plot summary in a critical essay. You have two choices. You can watch what we do in the shadows and then comment on 
what codes and conventions from documentary does what we do in the shadows appropriate? Or choice two, ask you to compare and contrast what we do in the shadows with another mockumentary. I suggest this is Spinal Tap. And then answer the following question. Are the documentary codes and conventions appropriated in what we do in the shadows present in your mockumentary? I look forward to reading your papers. And until next time, have a productive week.